five weeks and four downhill races later, the World Cup arrives in Europe. After a three-year hiatus, the search for speed has returned to Bormio. It's a really cool venue because you're like in this really deep, dark valley in the Alps in northern Italy, and it's really isolated from the rest of the world. So it's kind of its own little bubble of culture for a long, long time. And so it's this kind of medieval Alpine city, a lot different than anywhere else we go. The downhill course is the second longest on the circuit and among the most treacherous. Formio's unique in that it's incredibly dark and it's quite rough. It starts off, it's right in your face, kind of like Kitzbühel, fast and furious right out of the box. And there's some very sort of difficult technical sections that you have to execute. In December, it is gnarly. Huge jump, and then the bottom section is again technical. And then, of course, the challenge, because you can't see anything. It's really a challenging downhill. It's not like a feel-good hill at all. It's long, it's dark, it's bumpy. A little over two minutes, and you never get a break. It's exhausting. At the bottom, the last 20 seconds, you're hanging on, and you're unsure if you're going to make it or not. Very similar to Kitzbühel on the upper part of the track, accelerating from naught to 60 miles per hour in under seven seconds. The light is a little flat and tricky. Very little room for error. But just, oh! Ganong is down! Ganong into the net and into the net at full speed! In search of speed, every racer experiences exhilaration and accepts the danger. Travis will not be alone in this captivating dance. Bormio proves to be unrelenting, perilous, an opponent offering no quarter. Over the course of the afternoon, three Europeans suffer severe crashes and must be airlifted to the hospital. Finishing this downhill is a victory unto itself.